say a little bit about what's often called expository preaching um, because this is often sometimes held up uh, as the kind of gold standard of preaching all preaching should be expository preaching and many would see um, a great a, a great tradition of expository preachers um, stretching back um, to the Reformation and beyond and coming forward into the 19th century with um, people like Spurgeon and into the 20th century um, with great figures like um, Martin Lloyd-Jones, uh, John Stott and so on. But actually, even if you look at some of these great figures, their styles were very different from each other in certain ways. And I think it's probably most helpful to think of expository preaching, not so much as a, as a method, but a, an approach and an attitude to the Bible in preaching. And in this respect, I would say that yes, all preaching should be expository in this sense that we allow the Bible to speak. Um, expository carries the idea of exposing something to view, letting people see it, uncovering it. And the idea of expository preaching is that we, we just try to allow the Bible to speak. After all, if we believe that God has spoken and still speaks through the Bible, then we need to be careful not just to overlay that too much with our own agenda, with our own questions, with our own interpretations, uh, with the way that we like to break down the Bible, whether into themes or topics or whatever. We want to simply let people hear what the text says. Now, of course, we can't avoid putting ourselves into the process, and it would be dishonest if we claimed that we were. There is a creative aspect to preaching. If we're going to do that task of letting the Bible be heard, of helping it to come to life. But what the, the concept of expository preaching does, it just reminds us that we have an anchor. We are not up there on a soapbox to give our personal opinion. We are there to reflect a process whereby we have tried to listen to the Bible and listen to how we think God may be speaking not just to us but to his people today through it and humbly to open that up to them and there are all sorts of different ways you can do that so um just to take an example um i realize that when we talk about the history of preaching sometimes it can be a very male dominated topic and these days, and indeed through history, there have been many female preachers as well um, who could be great examples for us in different ways. But because they're two very familiar examples, I will just use Stott and Lloyd-Jones. Both are sometimes held up as examples of great expository preaching. But they have very different approaches. So Stott would tend to take a whole passage and break it down into, let's say, three or, or four key aspects of its message. Whereas Lloyd-Jones would take a verse and unpick it very minutely. And yeah, sure, relate it to all sorts of wider um, theological themes and, and passages and so on. So he would work through a, a, a book very, very slowly. So both of those in their way can be called expository preaching. And there are other types as well. So those who have been more influenced by a narrative approach 
where a lot of stories are involved. You can absolutely do that and still be exposing, expounding, unveiling the scriptures, letting it be seen, letting them be seen, letting them be heard. So it's not a particular method, it's an attitude to the Bible. And one of the things that's involved in this, I think, well, several things, but one, of course, is that as we, the preacher, come to it, we need to be humble and let the Bible challenge us. Don't just come to a passage, as it were, knowing in advance what, what it says, a familiar passage, knowing what we're going to say about it. Come expecting to see fresh things, new things. And then ready to share that with others. But also be, be ready to hear the uncomfortable messages. Be ready to hear the difficult messages. And again, maybe difficult for us personally. Perhaps also difficult for our congregations. Ready also in the way that we speak about the Bible, not to be afraid to say, I don't understand this yet. Not to be afraid to leave some questions open, to be honest about difficulties and doubts. That often is when people can get a real sense of, yes, now we're getting into an honest engagement with the scripture. Now, nobody's covering it up or glossing over the difficulties. People are helping us to see what is really there. So I think that's some of the things that are involved in expository preaching, exposing the Bible to view. Mm -hmm.